Hello, my little flowers. Um, I am sick again. I've had some sort of weird cold cough thing, so I'm sorry if I sound horrible or if I have to repeat myself. <laughs> I think it's just that time of year where I'm just gonna have to accept the fact that I'm gonna be sick like every three weeks or so. Um, anyways, today I wanted to talk about something that has brought a lot of frustration, tears, and I don't want to say anxiety, but sort of anxiety into my life, and that is diabetic ketoacidosis. Um, specifically, what I'm going to be talking about is the fact that so many people are unaware of the symptoms and catch it so late that people are actually- come in. Come in. Come in. People are actually dying from this, and when I say people, <laughs> um, I mean like tons of children, toddlers even, are dying from this because their healthcare professionals or parents or people who are in charge of them are not knowing the signs of type 1 diabetes or the signs of diabetic ketoacidosis and they're either treating it wrong they are misdiagnosing it and diagnosing it as something completely different or they're just letting it happen because either they are not aware of what's happening or they don't know what to do or they're just completely missing the signs and this isn't in any way me this is in no way me blaming the parents for anything that's happened to their kids i know i was in dka for a good while before my parents noticed and they didn't they weren't the ones that diagnosed me they took me to a doctor and that's how they found out and i know they still have a lot of grief over the fact that they didn't know about it sooner and that they didn't um see the symptoms because a lot of people just don't know the symptoms but had the doctor himself not known the symptoms either what would have happened to me so a lot of these cases are where parents are completely panicked and taking their children into the hospital where they are not even given a simple blood sugar test so they start treating it as something else and then the kid gets worse and worse and even dies sometimes and that makes me sick to my stomach I know I've brought this up at least in one other video, but I've joined a group on Facebook called Uprising Against DKA, and um, in that group a lot of parents post their own, their own stories of what happened to their kids and misdiagnosis stories and sometimes even stories of how their kid passed away because they had type 1 diabetes and no one caught it for a long time. So what I'm going to start off with here is something that a friend sent me and put on my um, Facebook wall and I thought it was just a simple little diagram that shows what the symptoms are for type 1 diabetes. I know if you're watching this you probably are a person who has been through something like this so you yourself know the signs but if you want to know just simply a few facts that I, you can share with your friends, here they are. This is what you can do to save someone you love. First of all, no one is ever too young. If you have a baby who's having like extreme thirst or is vomiting go or is vomiting a lot or is just hungry all the time, seems to have diaper rashes, stuff like that, make sure that the first thing you ask for is a blood sugar test because it might be as simple as that. Um, there have been too many stories I've read on here of people who have been, whose children have mis been misdiagnosed with like UTIs or things like that when really they just were peeing out so much sugar that they are getting diaper rashes and they were not getting the energy they needed because they're not able to convert their carbohydrates into energy. And um, just people going back and forth to the doctor, different doctors, and just saying what's wrong with my baby. And you would trust the doctor to say, here let me figure out what's wrong with your baby, but no that doesn't happen. Too many babies die of diabetic ketoacidosis because doctors themselves do not know the symptoms and do not check for high blood sugar. No one is ever too young. Secondly, it is one of the most non-preventable autoimmune diseases in children. So back to the whole you eat too much sugar thing. It's non-preventable. If you have diabetes, you have it. It's not gonna go away. You're gonna have it for life. There are ways to manage it and ways to live a healthier life, but you can't prevent it. And it is autoimmune, which means that you can't just get a pancreas transplant and expect it to work. Um, 
and I'm just sorry, I'm starting to sound kind of luxury because I get frustrated with this. Um, but yeah, it's extremely common. And the fact that it's common means that in my, in my brain, I would think that that means that it would be tested for more often. Right? <laughs> these are the signs and the symptoms to not be ignored. Extreme thirst. Sudden weight loss. Frequent urination. Blurred vision. Extreme tiredness. Something that I think was a huge one for me, which was mood changes. I think a lot of people can say that during the time between getting sick and actually being diagnosed that they felt like a different person, and um, that was a huge trigger maybe for their parents, thinking my kid isn't acting like they normally do, so something's got to be wrong. First of all, if you notice any of those, instantly call a doctor. Even if you just notice a few of those, call a doctor and please request a blood sugar check. Um, the next ones are constant hunger, which usually comes along with vomiting because you eat a lot and then your body doesn't know how to process it and then you throw it up. Um, nausea, infections, tummy pains, and acetone breath. So I've never heard this described as acetone breath, but I would say that it's more like fruity breath. You smell their breath and it smells kind of fruity. And I don't know that anyone noticed that with me, or if I even noticed that with myself when I was in DKA, but apparently it's something you can notice. Um, so just give your kid's breath a sniff. See what it smells like. Ask a doctor to do it and hope that they know what they're doing. Let me just share one little um, story, or at least little excerpts of this story that is posted on the Uprising Against DKA page, because that's mostly what's posted on there. and. I can tell you guys that I have sat for hours reading all these stories and just crying because I feel so sad that this isn't something that is, like, I don't want to say more noticeable, but that doesn't get as much attention as I think it needs. Okay, this is just a short story. Um, a lot of them are much longer than this, but this is just to give you guys an idea. Um, I'm not going to say who posted this because I don't, it's a closed group on Facebook, which means that not everybody can see what's happening in there, so I don't want to give away that information, but... This person posted two pictures of her son, one of him um, when he wasn't sick and one when he was obviously very sick with diabetic ketoacidosis. Um, this is my son. He will be seven years old on the 18th. He was diagnosed on January 12th, 2012. His diagnosis was unexpected because when he was two, he was falling asleep at the table. So we took him to his physician at the time. I told her to check his sugar because, he's type two di because type two diabetes runs in his dad's family. All they would say is, it's thyroid. Let's check that instead. I said, okay, but his sugar too. I was told no need. Well, his thyroid was 164.4. We got that straight, so he was doing better. Well, he was doing the same thing, only he was urinating more frequently at the time. I thought it was a kidney inf infection, so I was shocked when I got his diagnosis. It will be four years come January. It has been a roller coaster. Sorry, I didn't quite show my face the whole time, but you guys get the idea. Like, this person's specifically requesting a blood sugar check, and they're saying no need to do that. And you know how simple it is to check someone's sugar? It's so freaking simple. Like, I don't understand why that's not just the first thing every doctor does. Um, and again, I'm not a healthcare professional. I don't know what's going on in their heads or what the procedure is, but I think if someone requests it and says, diabetes runs in my family, please check to see if that, first and foremost, if that is what we're dealing with here. And they say, no need. It's like, just just for peace of mind, let's just check and let's just see. Um, and yeah, if he had not been diagnosed <laughs> even after that, what would have happened to him? He probably wouldn't be here. Ugh! hate that. Um, anyways, I had to just get this little, this little rant off my chest. Please leave your own stories below if you were misdiagnosed with something else before being diagnosed with diabetes or if you know someone who passed away because they didn't know that they had diabetes. Um, anything like that or your own frustrations at your own healthcare professionals or whatever, just leave that down below because this is a community for us to share our stories and to be able to relate to each other and hopefully make each other feel better and the more that we share our stories and talk about this stuff then maybe the more we can be taken seriously so you guys know i love you you guys know i love this community and watching out for all of you just like you guys are all watching out for me so um 